Okay, my family. I have a message from our sister, Deborah Waldron Fry. I saw the bride of Christ with keys in her hand. I saw the bride of Christ with keys in her hand, and she was excitedly running from captive to captive and unlocking their hands from their chains. Beloved, you have the keys to your father's house. Behold, I have given you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. You are the king's sons and daughters, the royal heir, and the joint heir of all things with my son. Have you not known, have you not heard, you are a steward of my treasures, my child. I am he who was, and is, and is to come. I give you, I give to you the keys of revelation. You shall take them forth, and go forth into the world, and lock the faith of those who cannot see, those who cannot hear, and those who sit in darkness. Behold, I give you the keys to unlock the prison doors, to release the captives from their chains, to set those free who have been bound by the enemy. I am giving you a new assignment. Fear not. Your Savior is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. I do not grow faint or weary. I give power to the faint and increase the strength of the weak. It is not over, beloved, but your time of freedom is just beginning, and in your freedom you shall set others free. Whom the Son has set free is free indeed. The keys to the kingdom of heaven are in your hand, my love. I have entrusted you with them. Go forth now, my bride. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. I am releasing you into greater authority and power. I am anointing you and commissioning you to proclaim the year of our Lord's favor. Behold, I give you the keys of my authority. Run with joy, beloved, and set the captives free. Matthew 16 and 19. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Matthew 28, 8 and 9. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Isaiah 40, 27 through 29. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my claim is passed over by my God. Have you not known, have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the Creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak, and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Luke 4.18 and 10.19 the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed and commissioned me to bring news to the humble and afflicted. He sent me to bind up the wounds of the brokenhearted, to proclaim release from confinement and condemnation to the physical and spiritual captives and freedom to prisoners, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance and retribution of our God, to comfort all who mourn. Glory to God in the highest. As with every message, please take this in your prayer closets. Seek confirmation from the Holy Spirit of God. Trust in no man and in no woman, but put your full faith and trust in Jesus Christ, our risen King and Savior. Uh, my family, I know many of you have, have been being attacked lately, and the enemy is telling you you're not worthy. But remember, not one of us is worthy. We are all made worthy through the blood of Jesus Christ and for what he did for us at Calvary. He is the only one who was worthy, who had never committed a sin, was Jesus Christ, our risen King and Savior. He paid our, de our sin debt, a debt which we can never repay. So when you hear the enemy telling you that you are not washed clean, or that you are not or you are unworthy, you tell him, Get thee behind me, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. I've been having dreams lately of fighting um, uh, vampires and demons in my sleep and of binding them and casting them at the feet of Jesus Christ to remain until judgment day. I woke up the other night and it was dark and I just had one of those dreams and I had awoken right after I had bound them and I woke up in my whole house, not a light on in the house and I praise God 
for answering my prayers and binding them and for getting me out of the mess. I thank God. And I thank God for calming my fear when I woke up and then it was dark. And I said, I know you are with me and you are light. And then I was able to go back to sleep and rest and I had a peaceful sleep. The enemy is definitely coming against us in our dreams. He is trying to keep us from resting so that we feel weak and worn out throughout the day. I've been fighting it and I've been asking Jesus every morning to give me his strength to overcome as he overcame the world. I had a dream a few days ago of being locked in a cell and I was crying for release. And in the cell with me, I heard a voice and it says, the lock is unlocked. All you need to do is walk through the door. So Jesus is telling us that whatever is holding us, whatever is in our way, our path to get to him, has been unlocked. We've been given him the keys to the kingdom of authority, and that all we must do is walk through the door. So seek Jesus in your prayer closets and spend time with him. Open the door to him and have your relationship with him. He wants to hear from you in the morning and in the evening. He wants to hear from you throughout the day. When you get little moments, if you're on your lunch break, or on a 15 minute break or 10 minute break, whatever they give these days, speak to him, seek him out. When you have difficult decisions to make, seek him in all your decisions. Even if you think you hear not from him, when you start communicating to him and including him in your day and including him in all your decisions, you will start to notice that he's answering you and your prayers. So glory to God in the highest, and I pray for each and every one of you. I pray that he is covering you with his precious blood, blood covering to any and all who are led to listen to this by the Holy Spirit of God. I pray that Father God would place his hedge of protection around about you on all sides, above you and below you, and your family, around your homes and your vehicles, around your places of work and worship, around your provisions and your pets, and around your children and their schools and their activities. I pray that he would cover them. The same hedge of protection that he placed around Job and his family, in Jesus Christ's most holy, holy, holy name. Glory to God on the highest, for he alone is worthy of praise. And I pray peace upon your homes and your families. In Jesus Christ's most holy, holy, holy name. Amen and amen.